Welcome, welcome to the second Fitzit stick class of the year. We're going to be using the stick, the pad, the garden kneeling pad, and the two two types of balls. If you can't see me, do let me know. But otherwise, um, if you can see me clearly, please come to sit on the front edge of your chair. And as ever, just notice the shape of your spine. Um, if you feel yourself rounding, rounding, it means, amongst other things, that you're not sitting on your sit bones, the two sit bones at the bottom, you're actually resting on your tailbone. Um, so quite a lot of people who suffer from things like sciatica, um, it can often be that, that that's contributing, can contribute um, to that because you're resting on the tailbone area. Um, so if that's, if you feel that's happening, just try to push out the lower tummy uh, a little bit so that you come more onto the, onto the sit bones themselves. Make sure Please, that your heels are underneath your knees, that you've not tucked the feet back, and um, that your knees are, uh, the idea being I could come and sit on your knees and um, your leg would support <laughs> all of my, my weight, that it wouldn't collapse underneath it. Have the hands just resting on the thighs and bring your attention to your right knee and then just begin to tilt the knee a little bit to the outside and a little bit to the inside. So just exploring a comfortable range of uh, motion so we're not trying to force anything and just noticing again how the movement of the knee, where the knee is in space, affects the foot, how the weight is going down into the foot. When the knee is pointing to the inside, the weight is on the inside of the foot when the knee is facing to the outside, it's on the outside of the foot. It sounds so obvious, but you'd be amazed at uh, um, uh, how some people can have difficulty localising the knee over the foot. And then please bring the um, attention to the left knee, and then just begin to tilt the knee a little bit to the outside and a little bit to the inside. Good. So just again exploring easy range, but noticing any differences between one side and the other. Good. And then pause. Please bring your right foot slightly forward on the floor and then lift the toes followed by the ball of the foot. Put the ball of the foot down and then the toes. So you're just trying to lift the toes but keep the ball of the foot down. Then you lift the ball of the foot, bring the ball of the foot down and then the toes. And then once more toes ball of the foot, keep the, the front foot lifted and then begin to explore some circles. So you just imagine there is a clock on the floor in front of you and you're turning the dials of that clock with the big toe and then just reverse the direction of the clock. And you can see um, how I'm, left, I'm not trying to keep the knee still, I'm allowing the movement to flow from the foot into the knee and into the hip joint. Good. And then pause, bring your attention to the little toe, and now think you're turning the dial of the clock, but um, um, using the little toe side of the foot to do that, and then just reverse the direction of that circle. Good. And then pause, bring that foot back to centre, bring your left, uh, left foot forward, so I'm mirroring for the purposes of the class, and then just explore lifting the toes, followed by the ball of the foot, Put the ball of the foot down and then the toes. So toes come first, ball of the foot, ball of the foot first and then the toes. So again, toes. So we're just trying to differentiate different parts of the foot. And of course, although we're doing it while seated, this is a movement um, uh, that's useful for walking, going up and down a flight of stairs, that kind of thing. Bring your attention to the big toe, keep the foot lifted, and then begin to explore some circles leading with the big toe side of the foot, and then just reverse the direction of those circles. 
in, letting it flow all the way up into the hip joint. And then pause, bring your attention to the little toe side of the foot, and then think you're turning that, those circles, uh, initiating with the little toe, and then just reverse the direction of those circles. Good. Bring the um, foot back to centre, and then think of pressing down the big toes, but trying to lift the four smaller toes. And then try to press down the four smaller toes, but lift the big toe. And then press down the big toes again to lift the four smaller toes. And then try to press down the four smaller toes to lift the big toes. So I'm getting a little bit of cramp in one foot, that's okay. Again, press down the big toes to lift the four smaller toes. Press down the four smaller toes to lift the big toes. And then leave that alone and think you'll scrunch, or scrunch under the toes if there was tissue paper on the floor, you're trying to pick up that tissue paper and then you let the toes lengthen and spread. So you just scrunch un under and then lengthen and try to spread the individual toes. Once more scrunch under and then think of lengthening and spreading. And then keep your right hand palm on the right knee and just see if you can lift the big toe side of the foot and then the little toe side of the foot. So just trying to keep the knee still, so it's not the knee tilting, just trying to lift the big toe side and then the little toe side of the foot. Good. And then pause, have the left palm on the left knee. And again, just explore, can you lift the big toe side and then the little toe side of the foot, keeping the knee quiet. So not, not moving the knee if possible. Good. And then pause, bring your attention to your right heel, lift the heel high, take it to the outside and put it down, and then lift it high and bring it to the inside and put it down. So you imagine there is a peg stuck between the big and second toe, and you're just pivoting the heel around that peg, but allowing the knee to fall in the opposite direction. Good and then pause, bring that to centre, bring your attention to the left foot, again, lift the heel high, take it to the outside and put it down, and then lift it high and bring it to the inside and put it down. To the outside and down, to the inside and down, again, just allowing the knee to move in the opposite direction, and then come to centre, lift both heels, take them to one side, the knees go to the other side, lift the heels, take it to the other side, take the knees to the other side. Again, from side to side, can you feel what's happening, a little shift of weight through the sit bones in response to the movement of the heels. It's like a skiing type, uh, type movement. Good. And then come to um, centre, bring your feet and knees together and sandwich the pad, if you've got it, between the knees. If you haven't got the pad, just have the hands between the knees. Oh, my hands are cold. <laughs> and then uh, uh, lift the heels and take them wide and put them down. And then lift the heels and come back to centre. Again, lifting the heels, taking them wide and putting them down, coming back to centre. Just to explore a few more of those in your own time, but bring your attention to the thighs, the bones of the thighs and the hip area. Can you feel as you take the heels wide, the knee, the thighs are turning in a little bit. You perhaps feel that movement in the hip joint. And then pause and now keep, keep the heels together, but take the toes wide and put them down and then come back together. So toes wide, and back together, once more toes wide. And again, can you, even if you can't describe it clearly, doesn't matter, can you just sense that the movement of the feet is having an impact in the hip joints? Good, and then pause, and then alternate, taking the heels wide, and then the toes wide. Heels wide, toes wide and then once more heels wide and then toes wide and then pause 
take the board away for a second, for a moment, and then we'll do the funny walk. So you think of taking your toes and knees wide, then the heels go wide, then the toes and knees, and then bring the toes back, the heels back, the toes back, the heels. And then this time we'll lead with the heels. So heels go first, toes and knees go wide, heels wide, I've got another one in me, toes wide. Now just see if you can stay quite um, uh, wide and then bring your attention to the little toe sides of the feet and just think of pressing down the little toe sides of the feet and you'll feel how the knees want to press a little bit wider out to the side and there's a release, a lengthening of these inner thigh muscles. Let that pressure go. Once more, press the little toe sides of the feet into the floor and release. Once more, just press the little toe sides of the feet into the floor and then release. Bring your toes back, heels back, toes back and heels back. And we'll just do one more, leading with the toes, the knees, no, sorry, the heels, the toes, the knees and the toes. And I've got them suddenly a bit wider after that release of the inner thigh muscles. Come back with the toes, the heels, the toes, the heels, the toes, good. And then just separate uh, the feet and knees. Have the arms just comfortably by your side. And in this colder weather, see if we can move the shoulder blades. So you lift the shoulders up to the ears, roll them forward and towards each other, down and then take them back, but think of squeezing the shoulder blades together. You come up towards the ears, roll forward and down, squeeze the shoulder blades together, and just as you're exploring a few more of these circles, just check that you're looking forward on your horizon, that you're not trying to avoid the change in the muscles by looking down, and then just reverse the direction of these circles. It's Particularly, it's the squeezing together of the shoulders behind you and careful you're not substituting elbow circles for shoulder circles. Just a few more, good. And then pause and then release. Please take hold of your yellow, uh, well, if it is yellow, <laughs> the foam larger ball, the football. It's a, a squashy foam ball. And then have the ball just resting on your right thigh underneath the right palm. And the, the rule here, the constraint to observe, is as you're moving the ball, keep the hand, the heel of the hand in particular, in contact with the ball. It's very tempting to lift that away. Um, so keep it down if possible. And, if, and then just do some circles circles with the ball on the thigh. So if, it me if that means you need to keep your circles really small, it's absolutely fine, but um, it's not the size that, of the circles, it's really what we're using this for is to mobilize the wrist area and then just reverse the direction of those circles. Good. And then keep the ball underneath the right hand, but bring it onto the left thigh and then just do some circles over here and you can feel just how the movement flows into the elbow, into the shoulder area, the rotator cuff area. Just reverse the direction of those circles. Good. And then bring your left palm onto the ball and then just do some circles here. Again, if they're small circles, it's fine, provided you're keeping the heel of the hand in contact with the ball and then just reverse the direction of those circles, again, sensing how the movement is going into the elbow, into the shoulder, shoulder area. Bring the ball onto the right thigh again, but still underneath the left hand. So we're just changing the angles. And then again, just to explore some circles over here. And then just reverse the direction of those circles. Good. And then bring the ball between both hands, again, keeping the whole of the hand in contact, 
you're just going a little bit backwards and forwards with the ball. And then just continue that movement, but travel the ball a little bit over to one side, coming up, a little bit over to the other side, and then coming back down. Good. And then uh, have one hand on top of the other, and then you're just rolling the ball a little bit forward and back, again keeping the heel of the hand in contact with the ball, and then switch so it's the other hand that comes on top. Good. And then think you're going to put your ball in an imaginary large pocket into your left pocket, but look at the ball. So you, uh, uh, you can see from the side, I'm letting my back round, and then you think of throwing the ball over your opposite shoulder, but look at the ball. So you allow the back to round, so your head is looking down, almost following the ball, and you'll perhaps feel how as you round the back, the weight's on your left sit bone. If you begin to push out the tummy, as you think of throwing the ball over your opposite shoulder, looking at the ball. Good. And then once more, allow the, uh, bring the ball into the left pocket, and you're thinking you're throwing it over the shoulder towards your left back pocket. <laughs> and then once more into the pocket, from the front, into the, you're trying to land it in your pocket at the back, as you're looking at the ball. Now bring it into your imaginary right pocket, looking at the ball, and then think of throwing it over the opposite shoulder. Once more into the pocket. Keep looking at the ball as you're throwing it over the opposite shoulder, and then once more into the pocket, over the opposite shoulder. Good. And then leave that alone and bring the ball just to rest between the knees. Have your feet together. You can have the hands resting on the thighs and just to kind of allow an easy breath in. So you think of breathing into the sides, to the back of the body, and then as you breathe out, think of squashing the ball with the thighs. Perhaps you feel yourself getting taller as you do that. And then as you again breathe in nice and easily, there's no need to force the breath, you release the knees a little bit. As you exhale again, think of squeezing the ball and then easy breath in as you release. And we're just going to do three more so after your breath in. Exhale, squeeze the ball. Try to keep your heels down as you're doing this and then release. And then we've got two more. Easy breath in, keep the heels down as you squash the ball and then release, and then last time, take a breath in as you breathe out, nice and easy, you don't need to force anything or make a noise as you breathe out, just squeeze the ball, good, and then um, release. Just put the ball to one side for a second, interlace your hands, separate the feet and knees, but interlace the hands, just wrestle the wrists around each other a little bit, and then pause and change the um, interlace so it's your other index finger on top. Again, just wrestle the wrists around each other. Good. And then pause, bring your hands into a prayer type position so the heel of the hands are together. Good. And then um, just begin to point the fingers down towards the floor, towards the ceiling and then maybe towards your breastbone, good, release. So once more, point them down towards the floor, towards me, towards the ceiling, see if you can turn the fingers towards yourself, release. Keep the hands in the prayer position, and then just try to peel the left palm away from the right, peel it back down, and then the other palm, just peel it away, and then bring the hand, palms back together. Let's just do that once more. So you're just peeling the left palm away from the right, and then peel it back down. And then last time with the other side, good, 
and then peel it back down. Just bring the hands down by the side. Think of just uh, shaking out any tension, just to release any tension. And then please take hold of your stick. <clears throat> Good. Have the stick on the right hand side, just a comfortable grip on the, on the stick. Good. And then begin to reach the stick out to the side, allowing the head to follow the stick and then come back to centre. So just reaching the stick out to the side, allowing the head to follow the stick and then come back to centre. And all really just what we're at, the main kind of thing we're interested in here is you've reached the stick far enough that you can feel, ah, oh, the weight has come off your left buttock. And you can check that is true by sliding the other hand underneath the buttock. So just following with the stick and then come back to centre. And if I just use Boris a moment to show you what's happening there again, <laughs> again. so as we're reaching the stick, effectively we're tilting the spine to do that, to do that. And of course, that is a crude way of shifting weight. And it's cr why crude? Because it's putting us at risk of a fall. See if I, the head is outside the base of support. And what we want to do is to explore side bending. So once more, follow the stick with the head, allow the stick to linger and think of the head. So if you're heading a football up and over to the left and come back onto two sit bones. So you follow the stick with the head initially, so this is tilting, but we want to begin to side bend. And the way to do that is you can think of your head coming up and the left shoulder lowering, and then you'll feel those ribs coming together on the left hand side. So once more, follow the stick with the head, and think of the head lifting as the stick lingers, Allow those ribs to soften so that you're beginning to um, side bend the spine over to the side. So having introduced that pattern, instead of tilting, can you think of this imaginary grape underneath the right sit bone? And you're thinking of squashing the grape, but the head doesn't follow the stick it's going in the opposite direction to the stick actually so it stays over your chair and then you come back to center so once more think of squashing the grape but try to keep the head upright over the chair not following the stick and then come back to center and the next time you are there stay there stay there so just see is it true your weight is on the on the right buttock and there's no weight underneath the left buttock and then bring your uh, left arm so it's just the uh, to the other side of the right thigh so my little finger side is down it's as though I'm about to soar off off that <laughs> that knee and just think can you think you're just sliding the arm down to try and uh, as if you <laughs> We're soaring, soaring at your leg, leg. And can you feel, again, that soaring action brings the left shoulder down. It's just facilitating those ribs coming together on the left-hand side. So we're not trying to uh, force anything. And as you soar down, turn the head to look to the floor on your left. And then release. So as you're soaring down, turn to look to the floor on your left once more. Oh, feel those ribs coming together. Oh, isn't that nice? And then come back to center. And then bring the left hand back onto the left thigh. And then just once more, see if you can begin to press down or uh, that onto that imaginary egg 
keeping the head over the chair, maybe you'll feel it's a little bit easier now that left shoulder's um, softening to facilitate that, come back to centre. Now the next time you are on the right sit bone, stay there again, check your hand is soft, the elbow is soft, so you're not stiffening into the arm, bring your attention to your left knee and then just begin to move the left knee a little bit forward and a little bit back. So the foot stays glued to the floor, the knee is moving forward and back, trying to keep the chest open to the front as you're moving the knee forward and back. And then begin to add turning the head. So as the knee goes forward, you turn to look at the stick. As the knee goes back, you turn to look to the left. Knee forward looking at the stick, knee back looking to the left. But all the time we're keeping the weight perched on that uh, right sit bone and then come back to centre. Good. Pause and then bring the stick so it's on the first angle. It's in front of the, take the feet and knees a little bit wider. The stick is in, in sort of lined up with where the knee is pointing, the toes are pointing. Comfortable high grip on the stick again. And then um, again, this class, your advanced students, and you know that what we're trying to do is initiate this movement of the stick, not from the stick pulling us, but from the, tr from the middle. So you think of pushing out the tummy, that's it, following the stick, looking to the top of the stick, but just be careful that you don't turn this into a stiffening of the hand or the arm or the shoulder, and then you come back. So again, just reaching the stick away on the diagonal, looking to the top of the stick, and then come back, and then begin to add, turning the head to the left, come back to centre, and then the turning of the head to the right, come back to centre. So again, turning the head to the left, check the hands stay soft, come back to centre, turning the head to the right, come back to centre, good, and then pause. Bring the stick on to the, so um, important in this colder weather, you know, we're, um, talking earlier about the risk of falls in the icy weather to keep our suspension system of, as available as possible, possible so they're not really stiff as we're going outside. Have the stick on the other diagonal so it's in front of the left knee, left toes. Again, keep the hands soft, the elbow soft, the shoulder soft and then begin to reach the stick away from you on the diagonal looking to the top of the stick and then come back. So again just reaching away, looking to the top of the stick and come back and you'll feel the weight shifts on to the uh, left sit bone, the right sit bone is becoming light and then begin to add a turning of the head so you look first to the left as you're reaching forward but don't stiffen the hand and then come back and then turn the head to look over the right shoulder, if possible, and then come back to centre. So looking to the left as you reach forward, come back, and then to the right as you reach forward, come back to centre. And then bring the stick into the middle, so it's cutting you in half, left and right halves. Line up the tip of the nose with the stick, but make sure your stick is in front of your feet. It's not between the, the feet, so that will just help to lengthen the spine. Again, check the hand is soft, the elbow is soft, the shoulder is soft, so the movement is coming from the middle. And you're just reaching the stick forward, and then come back, keeping the nose lined up with the stick, Good. and then come back and then begin to add turning the head once to the left, come back and then once to the right. But with each turn of the head, just check that the turning of the head doesn't suddenly cause you to tense the grip on the, on the stick. Good. 
and then pause, bring the stick to a new place that's somewhere different. Again, asymmetry is good, just to be off center. And then um, let's make, stir some warm winter soup. <laughs> Imaginary warm winter soup. Again, making sure your hands stay soft. If you can keep your hands soft, the elbow soft, the shoulder soft, it means your movement, your balance is coming from your middle rather than trying to grip and stabilize yourself through the muscles of the arm. Just reverse the direction, Good. using the eyes to help by looking to the top of the stick, Good, and then pause and rest. And then please bring the stick on to the left hand side, get Boris out of the way. <laughs> and then first of all, we're just going to tilt. So we're tilting and coming back. And you feel the difference. So this is a much more precarious way of balancing. Precarious because our head is going to fall unless we're doing something to keep it, keep it up. Good. So once more, tilt. So you feel uh, you've tilted enough that the weight is on the left sit bone. Allow the stick to linger, but think of the head coming up, right shoulder softening to facilitate that. So you reach by tilting, let the stick linger. Think of your head beginning to come up. And of course, you see, if you keep the shoulder stiff, you're going to feel it in the neck. Whereas if you let the shoulder soften, I'll make it a much more fluid movement. Good. And then once more. Good. Coming up. Coming back to two sit bones. So that's kind of the first attempt to activate that movement of the ribs. So now think of the grape. Our imaginary grape is now underneath the left sit bone. And we're trying to initiate that so the stick is going to move but it's because we're curving our spine that way and then come back to centre. So again, the challenge is partly to keep the hands soft, the elbows soft, the shoulders soft, so it's all coming from your middle. Good. Now stay on the left sit bone, check it is true by sliding the fingers underneath the other buttock and then now we're going to use the other arm to do some soaring. <laughs> Not very pleasant image, but I um, think you're just re soaring down and then releasing a little bit. So the soaring means your the shoulder will follow the arm, and you'll feel those ribs underneath the armpit wanting to give way to soften to facilitate that lengthening of the arm. And then each time you're soaring down, turn the head eyes as if you wanted to look at the floor down by your right release again oh it feels so nice to me i hope it does for you too get those ribs moving the spine moving excellent and then come back to center just pause for a moment i just want to explain that so <clears throat> see with i'll use boris to help See, if I get these ribs, I'll come closer so you can see. If I move these ribs together, he's a bit stiff, Boris, but if I move these ribs together, because they're long levers, it will move this part of the spine. And that's what we're also partly trying to do. It doesn't look like a big movement, but there's movement happening if you let the ribs, ribs move. If you think this is a big rib into the spine, if I press down here, it's gonna, it's like a big seesaw effect in the movement of the ribs. Um, little interlude, once more have the stick to the side, see if you can bring the weight onto the left sit bone. Stay there, so the head is over the chair, bring your attention to your right knee and begin just to move the knee a little bit forward 
and a little bit back. Just forward and back. Breath is easy, jaw is relaxed, hand is soft, elbow is soft, everything else is soft. So we're doing organising it from the middle, begin to add turning of the head. So you turn the head to the stick as the knee goes forward, turn the head to the right as the knee goes back. Easy breathing, just synchronising the movement of the head with the movement of the, of the stick. Uh, with the knee <laughs> and then come back to center. Pause, bring the stick onto the first angle. So um, uh, it's in front of the left toes, the left knee. Comfortable grip, check before we begin. Your hand is as soft as possible, elbow is soft, shoulder is soft. So the movement comes from your middle to reach the stick away from you and back. And you're looking, trying to lift the gaze to the top of the stick as you go forward and then come back once more. Hands stay soft, come back. And then begin to add, turning the head to the right, come back to the left and come back. And you'll notice, if you'll see me on the screen, I'll turn to the side, so I'm not suddenly stiffening the arm, that's the kind of challenge as you alternate the turning of the head is to keep the arm soft, soft as you're reaching the stick forward. Now pause, keep the stick in the same hand but we cross the midline to reach to the far corner of the room. Again, before you begin, check softness of the arm, begin to reach the stick away and then come back away, good, and then come back, and then turn the head to look to the right as you reach it away, and then to the left. Is your jaw relaxed as you're doing this? Just alternate turning the head to the one side, and then the other. There's no need to reach into a place of tension. You might just be reaching the stick a little bit forward, it's absolutely fine. It's not the distance, it's the quality of the movement. And quality for us means softness. Softness, good. Pause, bring the stick into the middle, so it's cutting you in half, left and right sides. And then begin to reach the stick straight forward, keeping the nose lined up with the stick. And because there is this big side bending, if you're allowing it to, of the, so the left shoulder and the left hip come closer together. And because you're keeping the tip of the nose lined up with the stick, it means, if I just show you, what happens is the head, if I've got any look, is the head is tilting, tilting, because there's that side bending, the top of the head, if I show you again, Top of the head is going one side of the stick, chin is going to the other side of the stick because the axis is, if there was a line going through the tip of my nose to the back of my head, it, that's where the pivoting is taking place. Just do a few more, but turn the head to look to one side and then towards the other side. Good. To one side and then the uh, last time to the other side. Good. And then pause, pick a new spot for the bottom of your stick. Again, just check the hand is soft, shoulder is soft, but we want to stir this porridge or soup. soup. So to keep the hand soft, the movement is coming from the shift of weight around the seat of the chair. Just reverse. And then pause, bring your stick back into the midline. This time I have it much closer to me because I'm just using it as a reference point. Um, and then just see, can you shift the weight onto one side and then to, onto the other side from the pelvis. So you're squashing one egg and then the other egg. Feel how the, the spine is curving to one side of the stick 
and then to the other side of the stick. If you speed it up, see, that's it, good. And then pause, leave that alone, bring the stick to rest on the right thigh, just going to do some work for the legs, of course, and the, and the hips. So I've got it resting on the top of the right thigh, the bottom of the stick is pointing away from me. And then, uh, again, you know in this class that there are progressions and you stay within what is comfortable for you. But if possible, bring your left foot to rest on the, on the stick. And then, uh, going for a small movement to begin with, can you begin to slide the foot up the stick and then away? So as you come up the stick, you're thinking of the knee turning, moving to the side, so you can begin to see, uh, is there anything on the bottom of your foot? And then you slide the foot away from you and push the heel away. Coming up, so you can begin to make it bigger, provided you're not in any kind of discomfort, pushing the heel away. And then feel how as the foot comes up, the weight shifts onto two sit bones, as you slide it away, pushing the heel away, it sets off this whole chain reaction um, that, that where the pelvis t rotates and turns and sh the weight shifts onto the right sit bone. And if you follow the spiral, the ribs begin to turn, the chest begins to turn, the head and eyes begin to turn, lengthening up through the crown of the head. Again, coming up and then away, good, once more coming up, and then away. Now, this isn't for everybody, <laughs> but if you would like to try this, once the leg is away, stay there. So I've got my one hand on the stick just supporting it. As I slide the foot up, I just lift the stick a little bit, Allow the knee, the right knee to tilt in so that I can catch the foot on the knee, knee and, uh, and then um, bring the stick to the vertical. So I've just caught, I'll just show that again just in case it wasn't clear. So I start with the leg long. I, as I begin to slide the foot up, I'm just lifting the stick off the right thigh so I can tilt that knee in to catch the foot. And then I um, bring the right knee back over the heel. So it's a strong stretch gain for the, some of the muscles in the hip, again for sciatica people. It can be um, uh, uh, strong. So you just see if you can just stay here and breathe. And then bring your attention to your the heel that's on the, on the, on the other leg, so the left heel. And then just, can you push the heel out to the right, the left heel out to the right, keep it there. And again, for many, that's already a very strong stretch in those hip muscles. So just see, can you breathe here, breathe here. But if you're feeling, oh, Stuart, that's not enough, I'd like a bit more. You can either have one hand on the stick or both hands on the stick. Just begin to reach the stick forward, good, and back a little bit. You can change the angle, looking up, good, just reaching in slightly different places, good. And then maybe you could try a little circle with the stick. But keep pushing your left heel out to the side and then just reverse the circle if you're doing it. Might be a one arm circle, two arm circle, doesn't matter which hand the stick is in, whatever. Good. And then pause and then undo. Whoa. <laughs> Good. And then let's do the other side. So we'll just start with the basic exercise covered in. I think it's chapter three in the book, <laughs> no, or chapter four maybe, that uh, have, the, have the top of the stick on the left thigh, bottom of the stick pointing away, and then just see if you can bring the left right foot to rest on the stick. 
And again, if, you, if, you, if you're just doing a little movement, it's absolutely fine, provided as your foot cut is coming up the stick, you're allowing the knee to turn out. See, and then we're getting rotation in the hip joint, synchronizing the movement of the hip joint with the knee and the foot. But if you are getting more comfortable with this, you can begin to slide the foot up further, looking at the sole of the foot, so the back rounds, as the foot goes away from you, push that heel away and feel the shift, the turn through the pelvis and the spiral going through the crown of the head. Coming up and then going away. Such a fabulous way of uh, waking up the legs and the hip joints, I think. <laughs> Good. Just do one more. Just go where you're comfortable, where you can breathe and keep the jaw nice and relaxed. And then if you would like to go try the next part, you begin to slide the foot up, use your hand to lift the stick a little bit, allow the left knee to tilt in, so you catch the right foot with the other knee, and then you um, come into the, this um, gluteal stretch uh, position. So, so once there, push the right heel out to the side. The, the foot is flexed effectively. And it can again, it can either be one, here might be fine, just somewhere where you can breathe. But if you'd like just to intensify or explore a few um, different movements, you can begin to reach the stick away, pushing the, the lifted heel out to the side all the time. Maybe just try a few circles. Don't have to be big circles. And then just reverse the direction of those circles. Oh, lovely, good. And then pause, undo, bring the leg carefully down. Good. And then have both hands on the, on the stick. And we'll go straight away into our arch and curl sequence. Well, actually, first of all, we'll just do, yeah. So we round the back to look at the bottom of the stick, keeping the shoulder over the hip at the side. Arch the back to look at the top of the stick. Rounding to look at the bottom of the stick. Arching the back to look at the top of the stick. Just check, if you have a quick look, that as you're doing this, you're not tensing the shoulders to do this. Shoulders stay nice and quiet. Again, it's your middle. It's the middle that's doing the movement, not so much your shoulders. And then the next time, your arch looking at the top of the stick, begin to reach forward. So this is the, I know it's a horrible image, but it's the, it's the throwing up as if you're about to projectile vomit. <laughs> over out to, out away from you and then you look down curl the pelvis to come back so it's the it's the pelvis it's like your head is the end of a whip and you're using the pe pelvis and the spine to throw <laughs> the head away from you and then you're curling back in once more whipping away release the head and then curling in, and then let's reverse this movement so that you round to go forward, and then now it's like you're licking up a gigantic cone of ice cream or a lollipop to look at the top of the stick, and you come back in that arch. So you dive to go forward, lengthen the spine to come back, keep the jaw nice and relaxed, once more rounding to go forward, arching to come back, good. And then pause, bring the stick into the middle and then have both hands on the stick and then just begin to do some of our two-handed circles. Okay, uh, as you're exploring, it's also your, the, my grip on the stick, it's, I'm just trying to contain the stick. So I'm not gripping on for dear life as you explore these circles and then just reverse the direction of the circle. Super.
Good. And then pause, leave that alone, just bring the stick and put it down for one moment. And then please take hold of your orange ball, if it's orange, um, the smaller ball, squashy, squashy ball. Okay. Have it in the right hand to begin with, and then just squeeze the ball. Release. Squeeze and release. And once more, just squeeze the ball. Good. And then release a bit closer, just so you can see. And then bring it into the left hand. Again, just squeeze. So just working on grip strength. Release. Squeeze. Release. Squeeze. Release. Bring it back into the right hand. You can have the ball resting on your thigh. So for, it's just, first of all, thumb and index finger. And you're just trying to pinch the thumb and index finger together. Release. Pinch. Release. Middle finger and thumb. Pinch. Release. Pinch. Release. And then the ring finger. Pinch. Release. Pinch. Release. And then the little finger. Pinch, release, pinch, release, and then just squeeze the balls once more, release. Bring the ball underneath the left hand, into the left hand I should say. First of all, just go through the individual finger, opposing individual fingers to the thumb. So thumb and index finger, squeeze, release, squeeze, release, thumb and middle finger, Squeeze, release, squeeze, release, thumb and ring finger, pinch, release, pinch, release, and then thumb and little finger, squeeze, good, squeeze, release, and then just everything squeezing together, good, and then release, and then Please take hold of your yellow. So there we're just working on the flexor muscles of the hands and the individual fingers, the muscles that uh, help us with grips, grip strength. But it's also important to work with the muscles that extend and the individual fingers. So if you have the, um, the bigger ball just resting on your thigh with the right hand just resting, just go first of all through the individual fingers. If you can do it, it seems so simple, but if you if you're can't, um, it's definitely worth um, exploring to keep the mobility of the fingers. So first of all, just the index finger lifting and down, middle finger lifting and down, ring finger lifting and down, little finger lifting and down. And then once more, little, ring finger lifting only and down, middle finger lifting and down, index finger and down. And now try to lift the index and the middle finger together. But as you lift them, keep them separate. Quite often what a person will do will try to use one finger to lift the other. And then index finger and ring finger lifting and down. And then index finger and little finger and down. And now middle and ring, but keep them separate again. Separate the fingers as you lift them and down. And now middle and little lifting and down. And then ring and little lifting and down. Just do a few circles with the ball just to release any tension. Good. And then bring the ball underneath the left hand. So again I'm mirroring. And first of all we'll just go through can you differentiate the individual fingers clearly. Index finger lifting down. Middle finger down. Ring finger down. Little finger down. And then little finger again ring finger, middle finger, index finger.
and then we'll do combinations. Index and middle, but separate them as you lift them if possible, and down. Index and ring, and down. Index and little, and down. And then middle and ring, keeping them separate, and down. And then middle and little, and down. And then ring and little, and down. And then just do a few circles, just to relieve any tension. I have a couple of students when I work with them at home doing these exercises. It's always amazing how the toes, different toes want to get involved in this movement of the, of the fingers. Um, just bring your hands together. See if I can just, I'll use this just to see if that makes it clearer. So you just have your, um, all the fingers together and the thumb tips together. And then just see, can you take away the little fingers only? And then the middle fingers. And then the, oh sorry, the ring fingers and then the middle fingers. That all the fingers are spread apart from the thumbs and index fingers. And then can you bring just the middle fingers back, the ring fingers back, and then the little fingers back. So once more, little, ring, middle, bring your middle fingers back, ring fingers back, and then little fingers back, good. And then just um, four to one side, just give the hands a, a, a little bit of a, a shake. Just notice how the hands will feel. Just bring your hands to rest on your thighs for a moment. Just bring the weight to one side and then towards the other side. Try and keep the head in the centre. Can, can you feel curving of the spine to shift weight? Okay. So, um, I see time, oh, time's running out again, we'll end there, um, but I wanted to do something for hands and shoulders and wrists today, just to loosen up the, those areas, because again, in this weather, a lot of people who might be prone to fall, uh, yeah, it's important to keep the, um, everything as flexible and adaptable as possible. Thank you very much everyone, stay safe, stay warm, and um, see you next week.